Okay, those, so this is now a very particular moment in that day because we are very lucky to, to welcome Priyanka. She, she comes from India and she's going to share with, with us um, her experience in her country uh, that we, we, we could compare to our experience as women or about women in te and technology and computer sciences especially. Um, so Priyanka is a Mozilla reps and she's member of WUMOS, of course, uh, Women and Mozilla, which is an association uh, into Mozilla. She is a proud representative of WUMOS and we are very, very proud of her to be part of that experience. Um, she does localization work for both Mozilla and Wikipedia and Wikipedia, sorry. She is a developer and is also passionate towards technical documentation and software architecture designing. So please really welcome Priyanka. Good evening. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Thank you. Uh, before I begin, I just need a show of hands. How many ladies in the room? Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. This is a site we rarely get to see. I mean, at least uh, back in my place, whenever we have an open source conference, a technical conference, the number of female participants, the number of female contributors is pretty low. And that's the exact reason for me taking up this topic. So today I'm going to talk a bit about women in technology, how things are at present in uh, open source world, and a few of my ideas how things can be better. And I would please request you to like, uh, give in your ideas of what you think could be done to make the situation better and the statistics better. This one is a very favorite quote of mine. It says, when one, one woman helps another, amazing things can happen. And this is the exact reason why today we have so many different woman-centric groups in almost all open source projects. So all the women present in this room, if we take up this motto, this mission of helping another woman outside this room to uh, take their first step in technology, take their first step towards open source world, I think by next year when we uh, again meet in this room, the entire number will get double, right? So things are changing. Things are getting towards betterment. From 2002 to the 2013, the statistics has changed something like this. So in 2002, uh, the number of female contributors in FOSS was 1.1%. Today, in 2013, that's last year, it went up to 11%. But did it really take us 11 years to change the statistics by only 10%? Is it sufficient or growth? Even if we see today, why should there be only 11% female contributors when we see that the consumers of web is almost 50-50? Almost equal number of uh, women uh, are uh, using the web, are there on Facebook, using Gmail, doing all other stuff. But when it comes to contribution, when it comes to giving back to the community, the statistics is really low. And it's surprisingly low. Um, some, of ve some very unfriendly terms that we often come across, and uh, I'm sure all my other uh, female friends present in this room will agree to it. These are certain things which are not exactly intended to harm us, or I mean, I'm sure when men uh, give out these terms, they don't in they, it's not an intention to any way degrade us, but these are terms which kind of demoralize all the other ladies present there. This is something very common when people just go and say, women hate us geeks. I mean what? Geeks and women cannot go together? So there cannot be a female geek or a geeky woman or something like that? There's no reason to tell women hate us geeks. OK, not true. We like the tag geek as well. I mean, I would love to be called a geeky woman. Uh, Second, second very interesting and very demoralizing uh, thing that happens uh, is and a reaction like, 
Oh my God, a girl. I mean, <laughs> when I was traveling here for Fos Gym, I got this a lot. So you're traveling alone for Fos Gym. You're going to be the only girl there. I'm like, no, I'm not going to be the only girl there. You're probably the only girl from India, but not the only girl in Fos Gym for sure. <laughs> So when we meet for this uh, different open source conferences, what happens is uh, we get a lot of, oh, thanks for coming. We are so privileged that you are there. Oh, you're working on this technology. You know, that's awesome. That's encouraging. True. But it kind of makes us feel that we are kind of being treated as some special species. We want to be treated very equally as the remaining members in that room. So that is why this, oh my god, a girl reaction is something probably we do not want, we do not like. And uh, the last point, whenever I uh, go around asking any, uh, anyone in a conference, I, like, it's an open uh, question in a conference if I just give out, why do you think the number of female contributors is so low to the open source projects or rather in, techno in technical world? The first answer is, they're just not interested. I mean, ask them if they are, help them out if they're not, try to find out why they are not interested and how we could get them interested instead of saying just they're not interested. <laughs> some, some myths or some reasons with what I think is associated with FOSS or are the reasons for having this uh, low number of female contributors in any open source project in the technical world. Uh, these are very generic things, I guess. These are very generic to FOSS projects. Whenever it comes to open source, People are not very clear about how it works, what they are, what is the difference between proprietary products and open source products. And the only idea they have is open source means Linux. Linux means a black terminal where there are white codes being written and that's all. We don't have the mouse, we cannot use the mouse. And it's something very scary and not user friendly at all. So if you want to be in the open source world, if you want to be an open source contributor, you need to be a coder. And that's it. I am not a coder, I cannot do that kind of coding, so I step back. We need to do a lot of tasks here while trying to bridge this gap. We need to reach out to people, explain them that open source contribution is not about code contributions only. We have so much more to do. Rather, most of my contributions are mostly documentation works, localization works, in spite of the fact that I am a developer, but I like doing those things here. So, these are the points which we need to uh, probably bring out to our uh, to everyone who is interested in general, but mostly to the female crowd out there who are probably scared of FOSS because they think they are not good enough a coder to come in. Another very uh, scary myth about FOSS, I believe, is people don't understand the idea of working in a community. The entire idea they have, at least my friends have back in India, is kind of like, Okay, so if I'm contributing to an open source project, so I'm not sitting in one closed room with uh, around a table with my buddy sitting on one side, with my manager sitting on the other and my mentor sitting in front. So if I'm stuck, I have no one to help me. I'll be completely on my own. So I cannot work like that. The entire idea of how a community works, how globally people are able to work together and how best this helps can be provided, it's kind of something we need to explain this people. And that's another reason or another myth because of which I guess many people don't step up. And of course, if uh, Linux is very unfriendly or open source products are supposed to be all very terminal based, then you need to be a very big genius with a high degree, with a PhD or something to get into first. And I have got this reaction from people when I say, okay, uh, yeah, I, I uh, am an open source contributor. And they're like, oh, and what is your degree like? Uh, are you a PhD holder or something? Like, no, I don't need to be one. So we know what the problems are. We know where the problem lies. And now the question is, how do we change the situation? How do we uh, bring those 11% up to like uh, at least 50% so that we can proudly say there are equal number of male and female contributors in the technical world or the open source world. So uh, how change can, uh, I mean, how things can change? One very important point is more visibility. As I already stated, people are not 
fully aware of how they can contribute to the open source world, how their little contributions actually count a lot or matter a lot. And that is one big problem because of which people don't want to step up. I mean, uh, the entire idea of uh, how does it matter to me, that, that question needs to be answered a lot. I mean, when we go down to conferences, open source conferences, and like talk about Mozilla, or talk about Wikipedia, or talk about open source in general, uh, the first question is get is like, oh, you mean you're not paid? You're just a volunteer? Then why do you spare so much time working on it? Why do I spare so much time working on it? And the very explanation of how open source world works or how the entire community-based projects work is the first answer I generally have to give in these conferences. So that clearly states how this area is still not very clear to people or how low the visibility is still now. Second most important thing is we need to avoid the kind of discriminations we have. I believe things are changing very well and uh, things are going towards betterment. Nowadays we, ha we are trying real best to get more female contributors and uh, there are different initiatives being taken, there are different projects being taken up only for this purpose. But when we are together in a conference, yes, we need to take care that there is this no, no level of discrimination being done not even, I mean, women are not even supposed to be treated specially even if they are in minority. I mean, when we walk down or walk up on the stage, we are not supposed to be treated like, oh, thank you for coming and oh, you are doing a great job. No, just be, be normal, be the way you are with your other fellow mates. Empower women, one very, very important point. So, uh, it's, it's a responsibility given to all uh, first contributors present in this room or rather, any first contributor, if you know a woman who might be even remotely interested in joining the group, just try and help them out. Tell them how they can do things or how easy this world is and once into it, how addictive this world can get. So just help empower a woman, teach them, help them, uh, help them take their first step and I think that's the most crucial job we need to do. Explaining everyone how, how their contributions are valuable. I mean, uh, even if one single spelling mistake in some project or in some localization is corrected, even that one single, single commit that they do is, is really appreciated or valued. And how much that is appreciated or valued, that is something that needs to be explained. Uh, so this is again something uh, which will automatically answer the question that, if you are not paid, why do you do this kind of work? Why do you spare your time? Because we are appreciated for what we do. We are valued for every contribution we make. Uh, uh, here I'll uh, like to talk about two very important initiatives that I got help from being a woman and being in the technical world. One of them is uh, OPW that we were sp speaking about in the morning. Uh, it's, it's uh, very similar to how GSOC works. I think most of us are aware of Google Summer of Code and how it works. So what happened, uh, I think around 2006, uh, there used to be very few number of uh, female candidates uh, who used to apply for GSOC. The condition was pretty bad. The number of male uh, participants used to be always high, be high. So GNOME came up with this idea of starting this separate program called Outreach Program for Women, which would, uh, like concentrate only on women participants. So for, uh, to be a, a, a OPW candidate, the only requirement is being a woman. So it's not very, uh, unlike GSOP, you don't need to be a student only. You can be a researcher, you can be a professional and uh, still be a OPW uh, candidate. And it's, it works in the same way. So it's like the same three month span of internships and uh, the same stipend amount being given out and the same uh, mentor-mentee communication process that happens for GSOC. Um, and uh, it's almost the same number of open source uh, organizations that uh, support GSOC are supporting uh, OPW today. So uh, beginning from Wikipedia, Mozilla, KDE, anything you can name, or Ubuntu, Debian, anything you can name, name of is uh, presently supporting OPW as well. So there are projects uh, which uh, any female candidate can take up and uh, kind of uh, start, just like uh, a GSOC girl. So uh, this is how our OPW, I mean, this is the OPW website, that is uh, gnome.org slash OPW. 
Uh, here uh, you'll get an introduction of OPW and uh, if anyone is interested, the uh, apply page will probably give you an idea of how OPW works or how to apply for OPW program. And uh, currently it's the uh, winter session going on, I guess, which began in January and will be ending around March. And the next one will be coming up again in uh, from May to August. So if anyone is interested, anyone is interested in uh, reaching this information out to other uh, female, probable female candidates, uh, this is the link they can get help from. And this, this is probably the most uh, interesting project or the most uh, uh, like interesting to me because WOMOS was the project I started my Mozilla contributions with. Uh, WOMOS is a, a group of, uh, I won't say only women, there are sufficient number of uh, male supporters in this group. So we call it Women in Mozilla. It's a group formed to support uh, the entire idea of getting more women contributors to the entire, uh, not only to Mozilla, but to the FOSS world. Uh, when we talk about WOMOs or any, any group as such, uh, be it uh, Ubuntu chicks or uh, Drupal chicks and stuff like that, people ask that if you say you want equality and you want to be treated equal, why do you think you need a separate group over there? We need a separate group because uh, it's a fact that when we have 40 male members in an IRC channel and there are only two female candidates there, they will never speak up. Trust me, they will never have the guts to raise their hand and tell that I have a problem, I need help. But when we have a separate, dedicated IRC channel or a mailing list or a group where uh, a female candidate can come up and just raise their hand and say, OK, this is where I'm stuck and this is where I need help in. Or, you know, this is something interesting I did today and I think this can help others as well. It, it kind of is a more friendly environment. It kind of encourages any woman, woman contributor to take their first step. And once they're kind of comfortable in the community, they are free to, like, not discontinue WOMOS, but they're free to take up other projects and, you know, dedicate less, less time in the WOMOS IRC and stuff like that. Um, this is the uh, WOMOS uh, website. So that is WOMOS.org. It's kind of a bit old, and we are kind of uh, working on, rin, uh, on the new website, and this is going to be kind of renovated very soon. Uh, so if you are interested and if you think you need help in this domain, so the WOMOS IRC channel is hash WOMOS under Mozilla. So it's not only Mozilla that's taking or uh, taking up this initiative. Uh, it's there are other open source uh, organizations. Almost all open source organizations now have taken up this initiative to help uh, get more women contributors to FOSS. There's Ubuntu Woman, uh, Ubuntu Woman, Gnome Woman, PHP Woman, Drupal Chicks, Linux Chicks, Debian Woman, and so on. Uh, there's one interesting story I would like to share before I end uh, this session today. Uh, we all know Michelle Baker. Obviously, she's the head and chairperson of Mozilla Foundation. And the only motto of uh, sharing this or sharing her story here is being a woman, if she could do it, there's no reason other women cannot or anyone needs to step back or think they cannot. There's another uh, woman, her name is Dame Steve Shirley and she is uh, the world's first freelancer programmer. If people are not very aware of her, it was back in, back in 1962 during her uh, struggling days when she was this, trying to start the, her own startup and everything. She used to sign her name as Dame Shirley. And because it was a female name that her associates used to get, the response she was getting was kind of making things very hard for her. That is when she had to shift from Dane to Steve Charlie. She started signing her name as Steve Charlie and not revealing that the fact that she was a woman just to get her initial uh, days of, I mean, get her uh, startup started. When, the, or, when her organization got started and got established, uh, she made this decision of hiring only female engineers in her team. She used to, when uh, putting out an ad on paper or uh, somewhere for a uh, new recruitment process or everything, anything, she used to state that male members will be hired only if we think they are sufficiently smart. Because she had to go through a lot of pain being a woman trying to get her place in the technical world. 
that was the that was probably her reaction to everything so the only reason behind why i'm trying to share these stories is things are changing things are getting towards betterment but we need to do a lot more like to bring from 11% to 50% is not going to be a easy task it took us 10 years to travel 10% and i do not kind of support that it is going to take us another 30 years to get the other 30% done so we need to speed up so that by next 2 3 years we can tell that the ratio of male and female contributors is like 50 50 in the technical world or in the force world uh so that's it that's all from my side uh so if you have any question please wait for the microphone to reach you and then you can fire your questions Sorry, could everybody wait until the questions are over before leaving? Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I work for a, an engineer-focused company, and out of the 300 engineers that we have, there's probably five women. Um, and after being at LinuxCon Europe uh, in October, um, I saw a presentation from the Colonel team with the women that were involved there. How? What would your recommendations be to me to put forward to my senior management uh, and our HR department to try and promote and get more women involved? Um, one of my ideas is to. as a company work with our partners to try and get more active within things like OPW um and other such things like our university graduate program and and such like what would your recommendations be uh so what i understand is uh yes women are kind of scared of technology i agree to that part but we need to find solution to that no not all women i mean even i am a woman who is in the technical world and i i understand the not being scared part and that's the exact reason why i don't understand that some of them are scared of it some of i mean there's a very big myth that logic and women cannot go together this saying is a very harsh statement which we face every day but that's completely not true I mean if we see some of the successful women stories I mean stories of some successful women they just prove that this statement is completely not true women can be sm- rather smarter than men at certain uh, domains or certain point of time so yes uh, back coming back to your question uh, probably those five uh, ladies in your organization they can be the best resources who can kind of share their experiences how being uh, a woman in your organization kind of encourage them or how they are very comfortable there or whatever their story is they can share their stories with the other candidates when you are probably going down for college recruitments or campus recruitments or however the recruitment process is uh probably if they speak up they say how uh they got from being a student to a uh, employee and how their journey had been it will be more helpful encouraging other uh, women sitting in the audience and they will probably give it a thought yeah if she could i'll also be able to and so that is one thing you could probably try yeah, that's a really great question and it's very encouraging just to have people posing that kind of question i actually run an ngo that's promoting uh, uh more women and girls in digital sectors of course this is where the pain point is the worst is in uh, for developers and i would only add to what she said by saying um it's about community so having you know things that are focused on women but also um women in leadership roles that's very very important so you get you attract more women into your organization if you have women in leadership these are just uh, best practices uh, and the other is um if you take for example i don't uh, it's not widely promoted but organizations like etsy who actually just cultivate talented female uh, uh, pools pools of fe- of talented female and skill them in house 
So it's, a, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, if you can just find good women that have the basic talents and invest in having them in your organization, especially if your organization has women as your consumers or your, your, your market, that you bring them in, uh, cultivate them, give them the skill set that you need, you will, by doing that, also attract women who have the skill sets into your organization. So those are just some basic pointers. Um. Uh, I, I would just wanted to go back to one thing you said uh, during your talk that actually uh, made me cringe a little bit. That I, re I really enjoyed the talk. I think it's a very important cause uh, to promote the fact that there should be more women in technology and there definitely should be more women in technology. I don't like the fact that you say, uh, we think that open source is Linux, Linux is just common line and we as women, we don't like that. We don't like complexity. Uh, you don't need to code to be an open source. That's not true. I mean, yes, you don't need to code to be an open source. That is true. But women can be awesome coders. Women don't have to be afraid of common line. We should say that women can code as well as men, and they don't need saying that they can be in open source by being less good than, than men and, and still be in this. No, that, that's not a, a good image. That's not helping the cause. Uh, uh, I'm sorry if that w came out wrong. I was trying to state that that is one of the myth that people have, that uh, to be in open source world, you need to be a very big geek. And I completely agree to your but point. But you can be a yes. woman and be a very big totally, geek. Totally, totally, totally. I, I totally agree to your point that a woman can be a genius, can be a great developer, and still be a contributor. And rather, wo that should be the scenario. Uh, I tried to point out just the fact that uh, that is not the only domain. And that's something very generic, probably, not a male or female uh, thing. Uh, that's not the only domain of contribution. There are other domains of contributions also, which we need to bring out. Yeah, that, your point is completely valid. I, I, I agree with you. There, is, there are other domains of contribution in open source, but they are not necessarily for women. Yeah, true. And women can be awesome cutters. That's true, all I wanted true. to say. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> so that was the last question. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last question. <laughs>